Okay, so first thing you're gonna need for the dogs is obviously the ground pork and I've got some ground beef here. Ratios in the description down below. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and build our hot dogs with the spice blend. So the main and first component here is pink salt, Prog number one. Why do you need pink salt? Well, you need it because it's going to preserve it, extend the shelf life, avoid things like botulism, which can make you really sick. So this is basically good for like quick cures, like sausages, hot dogs, or maybe bacon. And we're gonna just cook it right away. For this amount of meat, I'm gonna do one teaspoon. Make sure to measure it very well. Then just about half teaspoon of garlic powder in. Same for the paprika. Fresh ground mustard. Teeny tiny fourth teaspoon of nutmeg. One tablespoon of kosher salt, half tablespoon of black pepper, dry milk powder, half a cup of that. Okay, we've whipped this up really good. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna emulsify it with some cold ice water. Just think about it like a vinaigrette, right? We got the fat, we've got the liquid. We're mixing them together, emulsifying it. Sort of like when you do with an aioli. We're gonna go ahead and drop this cold water into there. It should emulsify. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, but I'll give you the amount later. Checking my consistency here. That's where I want it. Okay, so uh, that's about a one and a half cups of cold water. Now I want to mention if you have a food processor, you can go ahead and do this in that to make it a much finer grind. Just go ahead and set this aside. I've got these hog casings. Link is down below in the description. This is what we're gonna be using today. Normally you'd use sheep casings for hot dogs because they're a lot smaller and uh, it makes the normal size hot dog. But I want these to be some big boys, so we're gonna use some hog casings. Okay, so right now, you wanna go ahead and take these casings into the sink. You wanna soak them for about 10 minutes or so and then come back to it. We're gonna go ahead and give them a little rinsey rinse about five or 10 times. We need to clean these out a little bit. So just locate the end here, the opening for this camera over here. And then we're just gonna run it through the water. And then it should sort of inflate with the water, run it through and do this about three or four times. Then we can just go ahead and hold them in a container of water just like this. You could stick this in the fridge, seal, hold it in the fridge and it's totally fine. Uh, but yeah. Just go ahead and hold them like that. Okay, now all we're gonna do is load this guy up. So, if you have one of these automatic guys like I have here, I'll put the link down below. Just go ahead and load it up just like this. Uh, same for the manual, the hand cranked ones. I'm gonna be honest here, I've never used this automatic one. I've never even used an automatic one for making sausages or hot dogs. I'm used to the hand crank guys. So, I mean, it's the same concept. You load it up just like this. And then I've got a sheet tray here with some water just right below it. Go ahead and load it up with your hot dog meat up top. Now, you gotta tie a knot on this end. Before we do that though, we wanna go ahead and just crank out a little bit so we can take that air out. So as you see, there's some air bubble forming right here. Now, once you've got a little bit of the meat right here, all the air should be out. Now we can go ahead and tie our knot. There we go, nice and tight. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. You just wanna go ahead and keep coiling it. While you're feeding the meat into the grinder, you wanna be working the casing with the other hand. Keep controlling it. You don't wanna fill it too tight because remember, we need to twist these and seal them up. If you fill them too tight, they're all gonna pop on you. So just make sure there's enough slack, enough give, and then just keep wrapping them around in a coil-like motion on this sheet tray of water. Now, just choose what kind of size you want here. We wanna do long, we wanna do short. Make sure you choose what size you're doing here before you start. And then we're just gonna go ahead and pinch one end and then twist. And then we're gonna go to the other one and we're gonna twist in the opposite direction. We're gonna keep repeating this process until all of them are twisted and we have them all at the right size that we want. While you're doing this, you wanna make sure to poke little holes here and there on the little air bubbles, just to make sure that it doesn't pop on you. Okay, now at this point, we have three options of cooking them. We can smoke them at 200 Fahrenheit, that'd be really tasty. We could go ahead and just roast them off at 200 Fahrenheit for about 20, 30 minutes, or we can poach them in some water that's about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, I wanna note, I ran out of paprika, I used guajillo powder instead, that's the reason why these are a little light. You shouldn't have this problem if you use actual paprika. So I'm just gonna go ahead and toss them in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so pull these guys out of the oven once they reach an internal temperature of between 
that's my timer, hold on. Once they reach an internal temp of between 145 Fahrenheit and 150 Fahrenheit. You wanna go ahead and drop them immediately into some ice cold water just to stop that cooking process. Once they've completely cooled, you could go ahead and store them in the fridge in a Ziploc baggie or maybe vacuum seal them. And they're pretty much good to go. You could cook them off just as you would any other hot dog. And like I said, mine came out a little lighter because I used chili wajillo powder instead of paprika. I honestly think it has a better flavor. I ran out of paprika, so yeah. Uh, they'll come out darker if you use paprika. Now, all there's left to do is cook one, right? I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to make a Seattle dog. Now, one of the main components of the Seattle dog is the caramelized onions. So just go ahead and caramelize some onions like this right here. Now, next, just go ahead and toast up your buns with some butter. And if you're in Seattle, of course, you gotta do the Franz bread buns. These are the best for a Seattle dog. Super fluffy white bread, basically. Just go ahead and find any sort of fluffy white brioche bread for your bun. Now, once you've got your bun toasted off, just go ahead and cook off your hot dogs, sear them off. And then you just want to top it with your caramelized onions, cream cheese, and there you have a Seattle dog. This is how I make a Seattle dog. But there you have it. Also, I mean, just make the hot dog however you want. Mustard, ketchup, the classic, however you want it. Actually, I'm going to start a little challenge here. Hashtag show us your dog. Drop down in the comments down below what kind of hot dog you have in your city, and then maybe recreate it, tag me, tag Spiceology, and all your things so we can repost it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell if you're new here. I'll see you in the next one. Mm.